Hello, everyone. Welcome back to our 10.30 a.m. to 11 a.m. session of the 2017 Open Simulator Community Conference. As a reminder to our in-world and web audience, you can view the full conference schedule at conference.opensimulator.org. You can tweet us questions to at OpenSimCC or use the hashtag, hashtag OSCC17. This next session that I'm happy to introduce is a terrific session called The Noble Spirit. Transcendentalism and Transdisciplinarity. Our speakers today are Andrew Stricker, Cynthia Colloin, and Barbara Truman. And I want to tell you a little bit about each one of these because um, people that they have uh, great bios. <laughs> Dr. Andrew Stricker serves uh, as the Air University with advanced and emerging learning technologies into Air Force educational and professional military education programs. Prior to AU, Dr. Stricker was the Associate Provost for Innovation through Technology at Vanderbilt University. He also served 27 years as an Air Force officer and scientist specializing in learning sciences, technology, systems integration, and human factors engineering. Thank you for your service, Dr. Stricker. Our next guest is Dr. Cynthia Colloin, a.k.a. Lear Lobo on our set here. Uh, she is a professor at CTU and CCC Online. Lear taught 52 university classes in virtual worlds and received the VWBPE 2017 Thinkerer Award. Her team won the $25,000 grand prize for the Mars Expedition Space Simulation. Lear, Andy, and Barbara published the book Integrating an Awareness of Selfhood and Society into Virtual Learning with several OpenSim co-authors, including Valerie Hill, Kay Novak, and Rachel Umran. Cynthia, thanks for joining us. And Barbara Truman. Dr. Truman serves as a strategic advisor for immersive learning and collaboration in the UCF's Institute for Simulation and Training in Orlando. She studies presence and collaboration using immersive environments and avatars across disciplines and domains of education, government, and military. At UCF, Barbara founded an award-winning department representing online at UCF. Barbara served as the community manager for the U.S. Army's Moses Project as well. With this lineup, we are going to learn something. <laughs> I want to welcome you all, and I'm going to turn the mic over to you guys. Hey, thanks, Meg. Can everyone hear me? I know we always ask that, and then, of course, <laughs> but if you can't, time to complain. Anyway, I want to thank my um, co-presenters. They are my buddies, my partners, my research uh community. And of course, we come together, we're going to talk about some of our giants that have influenced our work, and we're going to think about how OpenSim transforms us, how it gives us this opportunity to visualize the things that matter to us. And wonderful, wonderful. And and we want you to, to take this journey with us. And while we're speaking, I want you to think about why are you here? Why are you a part of, of this community and the things that you contribute to it? And if, it, if your contribution is social, that is so important. And if it's entertainment, that is so important. And everything we do, while we talk about game simulations, research, character strings, virtues, and values, we want you to, to take this journey with us. Now, you'll notice uh, I have a slide up, and we're, we call our research Virtual Harmony. That's the name of our grid. And, of course, uh, we are self-hosting. I say we. Andy does all the heavy lifting, right? <laughs> uh, but um, and, and, of course, we, we've patterned this after New Harmony, Indiana, a place where Andy and I grew up, right, when we were children. And, of course, we're not children now. We're... We're, we're, we're far beyond that. but um, And that was where there were two utopian societies that came together and thought of a better way to live and, and to pull their creative efforts, right? Pull everything they did. And they created over 300 inventions and, and ways of, of doing business that transformed our country, right? And so uh, some of my giants in the field are, of course, about games, right? Will Wright with the, uh, the Sims, SimCity, and Spore. Uh, Jesse Schell with the Elemental Tetrad and how we design games. And Jay McGonigal and Constance Steinkuhler who are thinking about why these things matter and how we learn through games. And then Celia Pierce about avatars and identity. And then Joseph Campbell, of course, with the story of myth and the hero's journey. 
So I want to invite you to think about these things as we are moving um, through this talk. And of course, I'm showing in just a moment, you'll see, or right now you're seeing uh, scenes from some of our work and some of these places, uh, some are Loire in France, right, where we gather at the Simone de Beauvoir Salon and, and think about uh, where we're going what we're going to do next uh, in our projects, and then why these things matter, right? How they help to transform and make our world a better place. On Tuesday, we're going to invite you to take a tour with us, see some of these things, and then think about your work and what you need for your future. But for now, I'm going to turn the floor over to Andy Stricker, who's going to talk about transcendentalism and, of course, uh, he, the giants in his area. And then I'm going to turn it over to Barbara Truman, who's going to talk about transdisciplinarity and, and her research and the intersection of scientists and people to cause great things to happen. And then I'm going to conclude with a few more scenes from Open Sim, and then an invitation. Over to you, Andy. Well, thank you, Sin. Hope everybody can hear me. Um, I'm so excited to be here again for an Open Sim conference. It's uh, it's been life changing for me to be a participant of the community and and transcendentalism is near and dear uh, to our hearts in virtual harmony. Um, you know, we we really uh, are very intent on representing what transcendentalism means for us and, and all the possibilities uh, through the use of virtual worlds such as uh, the open simulator uh, community. And it really has inspiration uh, from German philosophers and English and European romantic authors. And we're going to talk a little bit about the American version. Uh, it gets represented in, in some of the early work of uh, Emerson. You can go to the next slide, uh, Cynthia. And one of the one of the characteristics of American trans transdisciplinism is a is a, a focus on wanting to um, you know put deeper meaningfulness into the uh, lives that we live and escape from the materialism and and the over focused on the sort of isolated lifestyles that we can get caught up in um, when we're focused on strict materialism. And so Emerson, Thoreau, and Whitman, and many of his other colleagues, they were very interested in trying to um, interject into the American experience a closer uh, connection and relationships uh, that we have with one another uh, in our communities. And in particular, particularly with nature. Uh, nature for them was uh, something that was uh, able uh, to uplift us from our intense focus on everyday things to uh, transcend, as it were, uh, deeper uh, meaningfulness in, in the purpose of our lives and, and in our uh, relationships uh, in community with others. And so they encourage people to uh, really get in tune with um, the deeper sense that we have of, of why we are here and, and, and the importance of our moments together and our time that we spend on things. And one of the things that um, uh, we try to do in virtual harmony in this spirit is to uh, introduce a, a way that people can get re in tune, as it were, to things that... Um, have a, a, a life-changing kinds of uh, experiences that you would think about things and relate to others in ways that our busy lives, apart from these virtual spaces, make it very challenging or difficult to do. Next slide for me, Sin. And so, so what current transcendentalism is focused on is is more of a, uh, a humanistic. Uh, philosophy where uh, individuals uh, in our lives uh, are extremely important. It's like a, a, a Martin Buber concept where uh, the, the encouragement is to not to see uh, the moments of uh, our, our lives and just 
you know, high intensity uh, kinds of activities, but uh, to step back and reflect and appreciate uh, the uh, uh, deep meaningfulness of, of what we are experiencing. And so um, we want to encourage people to not look at other people as objects, but more in a, in a close identity of how they are related uh, to one another. And so we, we encourage that very much. Next, next slide, Sin. So one of the things that we're we're doing is is uh, following after a, a French perspective about um, uh, transcendentalism that we we want to uh, encourage people to basically reconstruct their their sense of identity and connection and and meaning to uh, the world, and so we want to you know promote that sense of harmony uh, between um, you know the things that. Uh, we have to live with day by day and all the possibilities uh, that that um, our imaginations can bring and, and to create even a, a better uh, life experience. And, and this is very similar to Jane McGonigal's notion of reality is broken uh, in a sense that with our experiences in these immersive 3D worlds, we uh, can have our imaginations um, inspired and to think of the things that um, uh, we can make better and participate in in creating a better uh, life and community with others. And so uh, we um, are very much involved in, uh, in supporting how we bring ourselves together across all the disciplines uh, to promote uh, transcendentalism. And I'm going to turn it over to um, Barbara, delightful doing, and she's going to talk about her work and research in transmolarity and how it relates to uh, uh, what we do in virtual harmony. Barbara? Thank you, Andy, and Cynthia as well. It is a mouthful, isn't it? And part of the challenge is to keep track of the difference between transdisciplinary approaches and transdisciplinarity. So, uh, and as we think about how we design the environments, whether we're designing for education, training, and formal learning, or building new smart cities and communities, we need to integrate the physical and the virtual world. Transdisciplinary approaches create these critical bridges that connect us as diverse people, ideas, and cultures. So transdisciplinarity results when these transdisciplinary approaches show us the benefits of this unification of knowledge, being, and even nature. So in these worlds, we have the ability, as we uh, learn from each other, to apply all of these philosophical principles, the psychological principles, and the art and the science, and we bring it all together. For science, this has been very important for the science of team science. So in the list of the giants that are on the bottom of this page, we have uh, Basarab Nicolescu, who's considered the father of transdisciplinarity. I was actually, he read my dissertation and he put it on his website that's in this link. Now keep in mind, Cynthia was my dissertation chair and Andy was on my committee for my dissertation. So I was very honored to have them and continue to learn from them. I don't know how many people can say that they keep up with their committees like I have had this opportunity to do so, but I would not have had the opportunity if it weren't for these 3D immersive virtual worlds. So uh, another giant is Dan Stokels. He is actually at the University of California, Irvine, and he is a social ecologist. So um, I encourage you to check out his current work. And then of course, the team of Salas and Fiore. Steve Fiore is actually at my institution, the institution of Central, uh, University of Central Florida. Eduardo Salas has moved on to Rice University now, but they have written a great deal towards the science of team science to help scientists learn how to 
um, bridge these disciplinary challenges to see how imagination can impact the development of inquiry. It's not so much about what we know as much as how we can uh, imagine what we need to know. So also, uh, Jerry, Jeremy Balenson from the Stanford University Virtual Human Interaction Lab, he has had a great influence on my thinking, and he has presented at some of Andy's conferences that, he, that Andy has held with the Air Force. And of course, uh, Edgar Moran, complexity. A lot of people want to avoid complexity. They're afraid of it. They don't see the beauty in it. They can't appreciate it. But with these worlds, we have the ability to model a lot of complexity that helps us bring out all of the benefits that we can find from it. And then uh, lastly, the, the pair here are Peter Senge and Otto Sharmer from MIT, who are standing up the Presencing Institute. As part of my research, I suggested that uh, Peter Senge, he, he's written the book, The Fifth Discipline, but I suggested that the sixth discipline would actually be something they will come out with in the future, and it will be the discipline of presencing. I think that we, this is what we are doing when we are here in these conferences and when we are uh, collaborating to co-create or co-transcend -trans in these spaces. So that's my lineup for these greats. Thank you, Cynthia. And now uh, these are the tenants that Andy has come up with. And Andy, if you wanna jump in here, feel free to. But I, I love how you have built these notions around this tree so that we have the, the Coke transcendence that you mentioned, it's on the lower right hand side, but we also have where you've put in how to design for iconic memory and for meaningfulness. Everything that you produce in the world can be packed with meaning and how it connects to both uh, functionality and aesthetics to have the heart and the mind satisfied but then you know designing for these experiences so that we overcome isolation it, it's bridging it's a bridging function is there anything we'd like to add on this slide I think that's you, you described it wonderfully and um, you know, we put a lot of attention into the encompassing effect of, you know, the experience as Barbara and Sin have highlighted in Virtual Harmony. And we'll talk here in a minute about a tour. You can actually come out and experience uh, these design tenants. Next slide, please. Yes, and these are just some of the images in virtual harmony that um, the Hall of Virtues in the upper left-hand side, uh, right below that, where we were um, studying some of the wines in the, the French Loire region. And then also in the Simon de Beauvoir Salon, where uh, we talk about some of these philosophers and, and how this history is, it has has had so much influence over us, but also how it is influencing what we are creating and what we're writing. Even if they're boring scientific journal articles, <laughs> we can still sneak in some, some interesting meaning that will uh, continue to connect new um, inquiry. Well, it's not all boring because you see us there on the right enjoying a good bottle of wine. And, of course, uh, Andy gave us a wine challenge and said we all had to bring our own bottles and, of course, come up with our own labels for them and think about our experience. <laughs> and, of course, that's Barbara on the lower left and Andy, Barbara, and I on the upper right. And the Hall of Virtues, think uh, of the Arthurian Knights and think about character strengths and think about what is it that makes you such a wonderful person? And how do you then share and contribute that with the world around you with in, in virtual worlds as well as in your physical space? And how does this make you a finer person as a result? Well, we're running low on time here, but we, we, we only have a couple more slides to wrap up. And then, of course, there's a break. But um, here, Andy has designed a tree 
that we've populated with some leaves to think about the qualities that matter to us. And one of them is mindfulness. And this tree, by the way, in the next slide, we show a mesh version. And think of it as a navigation device for touring some of our content within Virtual Harmony. Andy? Yes, we, um, we, we have our inspiration from the contemplative mind um, uh, association in higher education. And they have a, a community of scholars that research um, you know, the, the things that we can do in our uh, academic and private and public lives to promote uh, contemplation and a closer identity uh, in community with others. And so um, we encourage you to go out and visit uh, that, that association in higher education and, uh, and network with them if some of the th topics that we're sharing today uh, interest you. But um, all these areas that uh, we've talked about, uh, you can go out and actually uh, uh, later, I think it's Tuesday, right, uh, Sen? We can come out into uh, virtual harmony and and you go up to this tree that you see depicted and it will take you around uh, the contemplation uh, areas of virtual harmony with various activities that you can engage in and sort of see the design tenets of what we've talked about uh, as they've been put into um, uh, the environment. So back over to you, Sen and Barbara. Thank you, Andy. And yes, um, we are giving a tour. Uh, I'm laughing because, of course, uh, several of you have asked me to give everything in UTC time. Um, uh, it's 11 a.m. Pacific <laughs> on Tuesday. And of course, um, uh, you're welcome to join us. We will have a hypergrid link up prior to the session. We're self-hosting, so we're not using another agency. And all of this content is running on Andy's farmhouse. And so I'm so proud of the fact that we have figured out how to, I, I hosted a class or two there, and it was an amazing experience, very stable, and, and it, that, that's what reminds us of how privileged we are to have access to this technology. And we want to thank everyone who's helped us to, uh, to be able to work in these spaces. Well, here's my last slide. And, of course, Andy designed a dinosaur for one of his um, a grandchildren or, or a nephew and I had to laugh because I just love it and of course I'm wearing a bird on my shoulder because we have so many birds living where I live and so uh, so we have spaces that res remind us of ourselves and we want to we want to thank everyone and the organizing committee of which Barbara and I are members <laughs> and and of course everyone who's helped us the core dev team the viewer folks and and you thanks all right. Well, gosh, guys, thank you so much for this. I cannot wait to go to Virtual Harmony and check it out. Check out the mindfulness area and get in sync with it. Um, does anyone have any quick questions real quick? Uh, quick. How many times can I say quick in a sentence? Ha! Huh. <laughs> um, but if anyone has any questions, I can take about two questions. Um Uh, we have a comment by Juliet that says, those of us that are metaphysicians applaud the efforts of individuals such as yourselves and your team. Um, I think it's very inspirational. All right. Um, if someone wants to get involved, i.e. by helping build or create in the... Harmony, uh, are you guys taking on helpers? Uh, yes, we are. And we welcome people to come out. And we usually get together um, on Sunday afternoons at the salon uh, uh, in uh, the French village to um, come together and talk about our design work and, and research activities. So um, uh, people are more than welcome to uh, come out and join with us. We'd like that very much. Okay, great. All right. Well, with no other questions, um, I want to thank everybody for joining us this morning. Um, uh, a reminder to everybody that you can check out the schedule for the conference.opensimulator.org. And the next session is going to begin at 12 p.m. Uh, and it'll be a, a viewer panel. And... 
because this is a virtual conference, it's so awesome because now we have a lunch break and you can just run to your kitchens, grab some lunch. You don't even have to get in your car and go anywhere. It's the awesomeness of having a virtual conference. <laughs> uh, I would like to encourage you guys during the break, if you have some extra time, to visit any of our expo regions. The OSCC 17 Poster Expo is on OSCC Expo 3. Um, to find a company information about presenters and explore the hypergrid tour resources as an expo too. Um, but check them all out. They're all very interesting. And uh, if you are a volunteer or a speaker or a crowd funder this year, um, we also are hosting a VIP Q&A, uh, and that's located in Staff Zone 1 region. And that starts at 11.15, so I want to send out a reminder about that. But thank you to our panel for this great presentation, and thank you to all of you, and we will see you after lunch. So have a good lunch. Thank you.